welcome to Exhibition. And hello, David Fairbairn. Hello, Richard, and thanks for having me on your programme. I'm delighted you can join us today. Um, your exhibition is Drawn Together, uh, and it has already been shown and seen at the Grafton Regional Gallery, uh, and it will be seen in an expanded form, in fact, uh, in August of 2022, this year, at the Hawkesbury Regional Gallery. Um, and David, before we actually look at the specifics of this exhibition, I'd like to perhaps explore more broadly what seems to have been such a powerful part of your work now over so many years and is certainly shown in, uh, in this exhibition we'll, we'll look at in detail. Um, but that is really the, you know, the imperative of the line, of the drawn line and the made mark, whether it's been in large paintings or smaller works of etchings or drawings. Tell us about that, that sense of you being drawn to the line. Well, I think I've been quoted probably on many occasions as to why line seems to predominate in the work. And essentially my answer is that it's probably the most abstract part of the language of drawing and painting, that when you strip uh, the image down to uh, essentially a linear uh, mark making, I guess the analogy would be to suggest that it's it's a bit like a building where you've taken the cladding away and you've just got the skeletal structure of the building left. So it allows air, oxygen to, to move through the work and it, it seems to make the work less representational because I think over the years I've become probably interested in the division between what is abstract and what is figurative or what is what is literal and I've never really wanted to go down the line of working with the kind of super realist approach and I didn't really also want to make a work that was entirely abstract so that that knife edge between between the two seemed to best be embodied by working with line and in a way when you refer to uh, the work says almost being like buildings with the cladding taken away many of those works uh, over the years have been of of very close looks at single almost monumental heads or figures and if if you take away the cladding uh, or perhaps in human terms the skin there is almost that skeletal sense of what's underneath so it's, it's a very intimate sense of revelation in many ways I, th I think with a single portrait it's a bit like target painting in the sense you know if you if you if you think of um the ability to you know work with a ready-made like in jasper johns it would be a flag or or, or whatever uh it, it seems to sort of take away the problems of having to compose an image uh the, the actual image arrive is arrives at by you know how you might mess around with the scale of the work uh, where it's located in, in, in the work. But it, it, it's, it's not a pictorial problem uh, as such. It, 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 it seems to find its own um, position within the work. So I, I, I find that, um, you know, there's a very de de definite sort of dynamic going on when, when one's working with, with the single portrait. Uh, let's go to the specific exhibition drawn together. Um, which began really with the idea of, of double portraits uh, of two people and a relationship between them. Uh, but then as you were starting to develop that concept, COVID became very much a, a reality for your studio practice. So how did that impact on the evolution of the range of works you've eventually produced? Yes, but because these... Uh projects done with regional galleries as most people who, who engage with with that particular sort of platform within the arts community that there's quite a long um, sort of gestation and build up to you know, obviously getting these these proposals accepted and then and then put into their their sort of um, exhibition schedule and so on 
So when I made the proposals to Hawkesbury and, and Grafton, I did specifically want to move away from the iconic heads that I've been doing for the last 10, 15 years and actually give myself another challenge by, by bringing in, in, in the double heads. And uh, as I previously mentioned, that obviously then creates a completely different sort of pictorial set of problems, which was good. I, I needed to do something to keep myself interested and, and, and to move on from, from an extensive body of work that had been um, essentially about the single head. And that was all fine. I mean, that, that those uh, proposals were put in in, in 2018. And I started working uh, with, with the double portraiture at that point. So I had actually got down, um, got into that project quite um, substantially when I guess around March 2020, we, we had the whole uh, event uh, of, of COVID hitting. And of course, those models that had been coming and sitting for me on a regular basis every week could no longer um, come. And fortunately, uh, my partner, Suzanne Archer, the artist Suzanne Archer, uh, she said, look, I, I'll, I'll sit for you on a regular basis. So that sort of switched the whole focus. Uh, initially, you know, I went back to, to working uh, with the single image of her. Um, but the difference there, of course, is that I, I did try to uh, make them more pictorial in the sense that they, they included a lot more of the figure as opposed to just the head. So there was a different uh, set of dynamics going on in, in, in those works. And one of those works uh, entitled Intimacy was actually in the Nobel Drawing Prize in 2019. So that was a set of 12, which sort of in, was in, indicative of, of where I was going. Uh, but then I brought myself back, having done those that set of drawings of Sue, uh, we then considered that perhaps, well, may, maybe we can explore the double portraiture idea in terms of the, the two of us. And so that actually was a was a very interesting proposition because it became much more collaborative. You know, Sue, Sue and I, you know, both being practicing artists, could actually bring in quite a lot of um, sort of ideas to the table, as it were. And so that that was quite quite a uh, yeah, it was it was a, a very much a, a collaborative um, project really. Uh, and mm. and I set up a timer, you know, with with the camera. And we, we, with much hilarity, we, <laughs> we actually set up different poses that I, that I could uh, work with. And then once I decided on, on, on what poses seemed to be the most interesting, uh, then I continued working with Sue in, in, in the poses that we set up. And then at a later stage, with reference to those photographs, I then uh, included myself into the photo, either using uh, mirror uh, mirrors or uh, working with the photo documentation so it was actually quite challenging but it did mean that suddenly the whole project became much more personal and much more uh, about the relationship which I hadn't initially imagined I would be going down that track but once I had gone down that track I realized that this was quite a potentially, it's a game changer actually for me to actually work with someone you know really well and you think you know yourself reasonably well and putting the two of us in, into, into the one context. Yeah, I think it was a very different sort of set of works. These works come across in many ways as being extremely intimate, uh, tender, um, affectionate, loving works. Were you aware of those, those emotional components in the process of creation? From my point of view, I, I was very aware that, that by putting the two of us into, into the one work, you know, there was definitely um, a fairly complex story narrative that, that went with that work. And I think, I think that that's probably something I found quite stimulating and quite exciting that, that um, 
suddenly the the the, the work did have a different connotation and and and, a, and and I could express a different kind of feeling uh when making those works as opposed to working you know with people who are one step removed so yeah I think it was pretty um it was pretty a re 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 revelation for me mm. to, to be doing this set and uh, quite unexpected, of course. You, know. you referred to the length of time uh, that your relationship with Suzanne Archer has, uh, has been such an important part of, of both of your lives. Um, and that process of time passing seems to have been an important component of many works that you've made uh, for example the the two women uh, in the the the, um, the drawn together series are in their 80s um, I think one of those women you've you've drawn and etched many times over the years is there something about the process of aging that is actually quite an important element well I think it's as all of us you know the aging process is a is a very curious beast and you i think it's a little bit of a surprise to suddenly think well I, i'm actually you know not 30 any longer or 40 and i think i've, I've always been attracted to to working with with older people in, as, as subjects but of course, I've been 40 and they've been 70. And so I, I, I've, I've sort of examined, I've been more interested in their oral history, that, that where they've come from, where they've been, where they're going to and so on. And part of the process of working with, with, with those older people has been that fascination as to how their life has panned out. Whereas in my case, at that age, I felt that I was still a work in progress. But of course, uh, in the present time, and certainly in the, over the last five or ten years, as I've become, you know, middle-aged and, and older, um, I've started to have to come to terms with my own mortality, and also e examine what what that means and what that process is about. That that um, you know the, the sitters that. I'm now working with, including myself and Sue and Veer and Joan, who you alluded to, uh, we're, we're all over 70, in, in some cases, Veer and, and uh, Joan are in their 80s. So I think um, the work has definitely become much more poignant and much more an examination of that universal um, truth about, well, you know, what 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 is this um what is this about what how, how does one feel about being at this point in time so yeah i think all the work now has become much more a reflection of my own aging process as well as you know depicting the aging process of the sitters that i'm working with let's look at the specific elements or groups of works uh, in this exhibition drawn together um, and let's begin with in a sense, the one that began it all, drawn together, the, the, the portraits of the two women. Uh, can you take us through each of these groups as I mentioned them and just give us a sense of the, uh, the media that you've used and your uh, responses to those particular groups of works? And let, let's start with drawn together. Okay, drawn together, um... There's a sort of subtext or subtitle for that uh, quartet. Uh, I actually worked with two ladies, uh, Via Hendricks and Joan Long, and I actually worked with um, with Via back in 2008. So I'd, I'd already um, done quite an extensive body of work with her in the past, and then I thought it would be interesting as part of this double portrait um, project to actually ask them to come and sit for me together. And, um, and that was a very interesting um, proposition because they, they are two very different sorts of personalities. So Via is very much, she's, she's very, very slight, very, very bird-like. And Joan is, is, is much, um, I guess, you know, in, in, in terms of body type, she, she's a much bigger woman, much more um, rounded personality, I guess. 
And so they seem to sort of exhibit quite different. Um, Joan sort of sits back and is very um, careful about her answers and very thoughtful. Veer is very much staccato. So I, I found that quite fascinating working with these two very different sorts of personalities. And um, yeah, that, that, that was an interesting way into to the double portraits where they would often converse and have little debates amongst each other. And I would be really virtually uh, watching. Uh, I, I was more like an observer to, to their dynamic. In terms of the materials, what were you using? And these works seem to contain more elements of colour than many of the others in this exhibition. The papers that I've used are proofs from the etchings. So when I make up the, the larger drawings, um, I'm actually reusing, repurposing those bits of um, uh, proofs from, from the etching um, process. Uh, and then it's a, it's a matter of working with acrylics, gouaches, pastel, charcoal, inks, a whole range of materials. Um, but what seems to have happened more recent, in recent years is I'm actually spending quite a bit of time really doing very direct, just willow charcoal drawings, probably just on, on a, you know, an acrylic ground, uh, which is been fairly edited and probably spent two or three months working with that reduced palette. And then the larger works um, have, have um, I've used a lot more of, of the, the mixed media. And so they're, they're obviously the more mediums that you have to work with, there's, there's a lot more complexity in how uh, those materials would behave. Um, and I tend to think, you know, when I'm working with color, I tend probably to think more in terms of tone. So if I'm using an orange or a red, uh, I'm probably thinking predominantly what sort of light value that, that color has. Um, so when artists are referred to as colorist or tonalist, I tend to think of myself in those terms as, as, as an artist who works tonally. Although the uh, group of works which you've titled Heartfelt uh, which are all of Suzanne Archer, your partner, um, they are simply copper etchings, is that correct? That's right. So as part of that process of uh, exploration, they were done when Sue um, kindly decided that she would, she would uh, sit for me. Uh, so uh, the etchings, I guess, complemented the drawings that I was doing of her at the time. And... Um, yeah, so I, some days I'd be working on the copper etchings and some days I'd be working on the drawing. So this sort of all preceded working on the, on the more major pieces that came later. Tell us something about the group of works called Intimacy, which are, which are also all portraits of Sue, but indeed very intimate observations. Those drawings, Willow, which were done with Willow charcoal on acrylic, grounds, which were also mostly drawn from the etching proofs. So some of those, those drawings had some of that history of, of the copper etchings under them. And um, so again, uh, I spent three or four months working on, on a series of probably 20, 25 uh, drawings of her uh, singly. Uh, and then I actually, out, out of that uh, set of works, I made up a, a, a reduced uh, set of 12, which then became the, the major work uh, called Intimacy. And, um, and as I've mentioned earlier, um, Sue was very much involved in, in, in the sort of poses that we might use and bearing in mind that I wanted to actually work not just with the head but with more of the body so there was a lot of um discussions about how how she uh, might pose in terms of the compositional dynamics how did you decide what the eventual media would be for the double lives series i think um i'd always been interested in the idea of how much of the painted mark I could actually hold on to 
as opposed to uh, the drawn mark which with the pastel or, or with the charcoal. And a lot of the earlier works seem to ultimately become dominated by the dry drawn mark as opposed to the, if you like, the wet brushed acrylic paint mark. And so with the, I guess the, the double lives works, I, I then experimented on uh, working on birch wood boards and working directly onto, on, onto the board with the paint. So some of those works um, are entirely painted as opposed to drawn and painted. So that was a, a fairly new uh, proposition for me. And I haven't yet decided ultimately where I'm going with it. It's a kind of transitional period because some of those works that I worked on entirely with paint were also done on paper, which I then laminated or glued onto the board. So there's some works that are on board and some works that are on, on, on the paper. And I think probably on balance, um, and I suppose I'm being self-critical here, that, that there's something lost in the works that are entirely painted, whereas with the mixed media, um, there seems to be some other element that perhaps, um, I don't know, makes them more, um, I relate more to them. You know, it's important as an artist that one keeps trying to find new ways to, to move forward and not just stay within a particular brand. And Many of the, uh, of the groups of works in this exhibition are very much presented as groups of works um, in very close proximity. Do you actually see those groups as a single work or is that just a way of presenting them? Well, actually, I, 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 I've been working with these um, series of drawings for many years. Um, could I then take little thumbnail sketches of these drawings and start to use them as raw material and play around with the sequence and spend quite a bit of time coming to uh, a decision about what that sequence might look like. And so with this particular um, exhibition or exhibitions at Grafton and at Hawkesbury, those works like Intimacy, like um, the double live sets of, of, of drawings, I have seen them very much as a, as a, um, a single work in that context. So I don't want to, like with the Intimacy drawings of the 12, the double lives ones, which are which numbered 16, that set would remain as a set. Let's return to your studio and your work in the studio. Can you give us a sense of your, your relationship with your studio? I've, I've been fortunate enough to, to visit you in that space. Um, and you seem to have a very, a very daily disciplined approach to your relationship with your studio. Can you describe that to us? Generally, um, you know, Sue and I work all the time. Obviously, life gets in the way and you have to shop and you have to, you know, you have to <laughs> go and uh, converse with your fellow humans from time to time. But, but essentially, uh, Sue, Sue and I would, would um, you know, we're very aware that we need to spend some time together as a, as a couple. So we have a fairly, you know, defined ritual where, where we'll have breakfast together and we'll discuss things of the matter for that day. So generally, we, we, we go off to our studios around 10 o'clock in the morning and we would be very mindful that, um, you know, we would have a sort of a tea break around midday and we'd, we'd actually um, come together and, and have, have a cup of tea and a, and a biscuit and then we would continue on to two o'clock. Uh, where we would do lunch and, and, and again spend a little bit of time together and then from two to six uh, we would be back in the studio and then we would come out uh, and that would be pretty much a daily 
activity day in day out so it's quite amusing we, i think half the time we don't actually know what day of the week it is so that's quite a nice sense of freedom but i remember fred williams making a comment about the studio being a, you, you feel like you're like a dog on a leash you know where, where the, it, it's it's always at the back of your mind so even though i'm having to go out and deliver works or go up to town I mean, we, we try once a week to go up and go around the galleries or see shows in town or elsewhere and that seems to be pretty much um yeah just committed to our work really and the relationship so we try and give some time during the day to say hello to each other well it sounds like both a, a practical and a very personally balanced combination david fairbairn thanks very much for sharing the insight into your work and thanks for sharing your exhibition with us well, thanks very much for inviting me onto your program, Richard. Much, much uh, enjoyed very much. Thank you.